All right, everybody, welcome to another exciting live stream, ITG Next Game of the Week. Tonight, we find ourselves here in Burke County, home of the Bears, 5-0 on the season. Going to be hosting Jabo Shaw's Wayne County Yellow Jackets. Should be a great matchup between these two Region 3 4A teams. Good evening, everybody. I'm Phil Jones. We got my man Sean Perry on the video tonight, and we are going to be bringing you what we think is one of our best games that we've brought you guys all year. Last year, or last week, I should say, we were up at McEachern, Cantrell Stadium, where the Burke County head football coach Franklin Stevens coached last year and the previous few years before that. But this year, Franklin Stevens has found himself a new home, and it's right here as the head coach of the Burke County Bears, where we are at tonight. A little bit of uh, background. First of all, I want to tell you about our sponsors. I want to thank our sponsors, Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance, as well as our friends at Baker Sports. And we'll be telling you about both of our sponsors and how you can reach out about the services that each of our sponsors, Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance and Baker Sports offers. We also want to remind all of you that are watching the live stream, be sure to comment with us tonight. We always like to make the games interactive. Always love to read your comments live on the air. Want to know what you guys are thinking, what you guys are thinking about the game and about our live stream and anything else on your mind. Of course, if you've got any scores happening around the state. We'd love to hear from those. Give us some live updates. They're especially interested in that Lee County, Houston County game tonight. That's where our other ITG Next videographers are in the Lee County locker room before the game. Going to be giving you some great insight from Dean Fabrizio. And uh, we'll be bringing you that uh, probably coming on uh, Monday. But tonight, it's all here at Burke County in Waynesboro. Burke County, 5-0 on the year. Now, you guys may remember, Burke County was coached by Eric Parker. Now, the name may not jump out at you, but you may remember hearing about the coach that had the on-field medical issue. He suffered a heart attack in this very game last year that was over in Jessup. Fortunately, medical personnel at Wayne County able to revive him, get him to the Savannah Hospital. He made a full recovery, but he has since retired. That's what opened up the door for Franklin Stevens to move from McEachern here to Burke County. But he's no stranger to Burke County. This is his alma mater. This is where Franklin Stevens went to school, played football here. So he's very familiar with the culture, the history, and what it means to be a Burke County Bear. On the other side, Wayne County, you want to talk about a monumental turnaround. Jabo Shaw was hired at the beginning of last year to come in and try to resurrect a very much suffering Yellow Jacket football program that had gone 0-9 the previous season. They had finished 3-8 the year before that. In 2021, in finishing 0-9, they were outscored 361-72. Obviously, football was not very much on the radar. Jabo Shaw came from Raven County, where he had coached the previous three seasons and had led Raven County to a 35 and five record over those three years. And he came in to Wayne County and changed it all around. He led Wayne County from an 0-9 start or an 0-9 season two years ago to 10 and three last year, a four and one record in this region, a number two seed going into the playoffs, made it all the way to the quarterfinals before they would lose at North Oconee. But it's a brand new Wayne County team. They're four and one on the year. Their only loss came to Appling County back in week three. Last week, they defeated Jenkins nine to nothing. Burke County, on the other hand, undefeated on the year. They'll come into tonight's game at five and oh. They're coming off of also a big shutout victory, 34 to nothing over the Statesboro Blue Devils. This thing's gonna be interesting tonight for a couple of reasons. Wayne County, has got a quarterback. Actually, he's going to line up at running back. He's going to line up all over the place. His name is Matthew Fuller. He's already committed to South Carolina, and you're going to hear us call his name and number 
a lot tonight. Number zero, Matthew Fuller. He's a senior heading to South Kakalaki next year. You've also got another big time player in Tavion Wallace. Now you may know his brother, Trevion. He's a linebacker at Kentucky, but Tavion Willis, number three, has 37 offers of colleges that want his service. They're gonna have to wait a year because he's only a junior. Jay Ross, or Ja Ross, number five, big defensive standout for J. Bo Shaw's Wayne County Yellow Jackets. We'll be calling his name and number a lot tonight. What I was gonna mention though, very interesting, Jib Craven is the quarterback for Wayne County. He is just a sophomore. And on the other side, for Burke County, they also have a starting quarterback that is a sophomore, Sean Vandiver. And why that's so interesting is because he is the very first sophomore quarterback to ever start for Franklin Stevens. So that's quite an impressive young man that has obviously made an impression on a veteran coach in Franklin Stevens. As a sophomore, Franklin Stevens, obviously old school coach, likes the senior, the senior leadership, likes the veteran presence that is so important at a position like quarterback. So he obviously had to be impressed by Sean Vandifer to give the sophomore the ball and the direction of the offense. And so far, so good for Sean Vandifer and his Burke County Bears. We are live at the Bear Den, as they call it. And guys, I gotta be honest with you, this is one of the most beautiful stadiums anywhere we have ever visited, regardless of size of school, size of stadium. This place is beautiful. Be sure to check out the Facebook page. You'll see the earlier post I made and you can also check out my personal Facebook page, Phil Jones, where you'll see the pictures that I posted of the stadium. It is absolutely beautiful tonight. Again, let me know you're watching tonight and let me know where you're watching the game from. Bernard Jackson says, let's go. Nathan Sloan says, go pack, go, and go Thomas County Central Yellow Jackets. Of course, different game. Of course, Patricia Lay says go Jackets, and I'm sure she's talking about the Wayne County Yellow Jackets. Joseph Arnett is watching us tonight. Nissan Altima says go Yellow Jackets. I don't know if that's Nissan Altima or Nissan Altima, but whoever <laughs> says go Yellow Jackets. Patricia Lay says, all things are good here. Glad to hear that, Patricia. Nathan Sloan says, gonna keep you updated on Lee County. Nissan Altima said, I'm watching from Wayne County. We expect to have a lot of Wayne County viewers checking in tonight that we're not able to make the journey. So glad you're watching tonight and hope we got a good one tonight for your Wayne County Yellow Jackets as well as you Burke County fans as well. Two veteran coaches. Man, these are guys that have done nothing but win football games their whole career. I mentioned the fact that for Franklin Stevens, longtime McEachern head football coach, remember he was at Ware County as well. We were actually at McEachern last week as McEachern defeated the Valdosta Wildcats 28-7. to Bit of a shocker there. But that was last week. Tonight. It is right here at Burke County where, again, Franklin Stevens is now here coaching his alma mater. You guys may remember Jay Bushaw. I mentioned the fact that he was at Raven County where he coached for three years before Wayne County decided to lure him there too, Jessup. And, again, you want to talk about a program that needed a shot of the arm. He gave it to him and then some going from an 0-9 season in 2021 to 10 and three last year. Now for Burke County, I mentioned they're five and zero, oh, and boy, they're used to it here. They have been to the playoffs every year, I think since 2000. Eric Parker 
took over in 2007. I told you about the former coach, had the medical issue last year, retired. He's doing well. But Coach Parker took him to the playoffs and then took him to a state title in 2011. Burke County has seen a lot of the coaches and other prominent members of Burke County wearing those big state championship rings. You can't miss those big things on the hands of these guys. So, again, they're proud of the state title, but that's been a few years. Twelve years, in fact, since Burke County won the state title. For Wayne County, they're looking to try to get one here this year. This should be a good one as we see both teams making their way onto the field under a tremendous light show here at the Bears Den here at Burke County. Guys, a real quick reminder about our sponsors tonight. They sponsor our games all season long. Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Their agents offer home, auto, life, farm insurance, and renter's insurance and a lot more. For more about Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance, go to their website, www.gfbinsurance.com. You see it on your screen, gfbinsurance.com. Also, big shout out to our other sponsor, Baker Sports, who want to welcome all football fanatics. Friday Night Lights 2023 is finally here, and Baker Sports and Pro Sports are proud to be the sponsor between Burke County and Wayne County tonight. Athletes and fans alike, between Bakers and Pro Sports, you can get your gear covered. From cheerleading to football to fans, Baker Sports is a one-stop shop for top quality sports apparel and equipment. Call Baker Sports, 904-388-8126 for all your sporting good needs. Speaking of Baker Sports, later tonight, I'm going to ask you guys to help me out with this. Around the end of the third, start of the fourth quarter, I'm going to ask you guys to help me identify a player of the game from each team. Those players, both players, will receive a brand new set of shoulder pads, compliments of our friends at Baker Sports. So again, that'll come later on. In the meantime, kick back, relax, enjoy your favorite cold beverage. I've got me, of course, a cold Pepsi up here. Thanks to my friends at Pepsi, sponsors of my show, Extra Point, as we get ready to go. Burke County, Wayne County, Burke County going to kick it off. It's going to take a bounce and roll into the end zone for a touchback. So we are going to see the Wayne County offense go out first tonight. They'll be first and 10 from their own 20. I mentioned earlier Wayne County, their quarterback, Jeb Craven. Now, I talked to one of the Wayne County radio guys. You know Jabo Shaw, of course, at uh, Wayne or at, uh, Raven County. Loves to throw the football. He is, after all, a former quarterback. Quarterback to Georgia Tech and Georgia Southern. But they've had a little bit of difficulty throwing the football tonight or this year, so we'll see what they decide to do. As I say that, they're going to throw it first down, complete, taking it to the 30. Should be good enough for a first down. Pass complete over there to number seven, Eric Hodges, a junior receiver. Just underway. ITG next game of the week. Santiago Vic Rodriguez says, let's go Matt Fuller, number zero. Yeah, we'll probably call his name a lot tonight for sure. Two receivers, near side, two to the far side. Quarterback going to throw it. Incomplete. Lucky that thing wasn't intercepted. Went over the head of the intended receiver, number 13, Cam Reeves, and bounced harmlessly on the turf, fortunately, for Jeb Craven. He's a sophomore. Again, we're going to see two sophomore starting quarterbacks here tonight. We had a penalty flag called, or a penalty called on the play. A false start on the Yellow Jacket. So that's going to back him up five yards. We'll replay first down. First and 15. We're just underway. First quarter. Hand off left side. Not much. That's Fuller. First of many carries that 
he'll get tonight surely, and on that play, not much. Bring up second down and long. Beautiful night. Finally getting some football type weather after a season where we had anything but football type weather, I can tell you that. Second down and long. Again, four receivers set on almost every play. Craven gonna throw it. Again, threw it behind his receiver. Lucky that wasn't intercepted. Intended over here for Jockey's fail. And again, lucky that thing was not intercepted. As you had a Burke County defender get his hands on it, not able to pull it in. So gonna be third down and 14. Just underway, ITG next game of the week. We are at Burke County. Beautiful, beautiful facilities here, guys. Gonna run it to Fuller, right side. He'll have a little bit of running room. He's gonna get it up to the original line of scrimmage, and that's about it. So we're gonna see Wayne County forced into a punting situation on their first offensive possession of the night. Burke County going to send back Jordan Bryant. And punt, number uh, wait a minute, that is actually Rondarius Gray. Rondarius Gray back deep, and he is a weapon. Had a big game last week against Statesboro. Here's the punt. High end over end punt. Going to take a Wayne County bounce and a Wayne County roll. Gary going to get away from it. And Wayne County going to finally down it inside the Burke County 20 at the 16-yard line. Later tonight, I'm going to ask you guys to help me select the Baker Sports Pro Sports player of the game. And that will come from both teams. And that player, those players rather, will be receiving a brand-new set of shoulder pads. Compliments of our friends at Baker Sports and Pro Sports. Them along with Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance, sponsors of tonight's game, and our ITG Next Game of the Week package all season long. All right, so here's Burke County on offense for the first time tonight. Again, for the first time ever, Franklin Stevens starting a sophomore quarterback. Going to hand it right side. That's number one, Amir Williams. He's a junior running back. Well, again, we'll call his name a lot tonight. Short gain over the right side. We'll give him a couple. We're going to bring him second down and eight. We're just underway in the first quarter. We're under 10 minutes, 925 and counting to go in the opening quarter. No score. Burke County, their first offensive possession after Wayne County punted it away, unable to do anything with their opening possession. Got a penalty flag. Going to be an offside, I believe, on Wayne County. I think the corner came up, actually. Got over the ball at sea. They're going to mark it off against the Yellow Jackets. So that'll give Burke County five yards easy. Now it's going to make up second down and three. Burke County at their own 23. We're just underway, no score. Burke County. Going to bring a receiver over here to the near side. One man on the far side. He'll come in motion. Quarterback run pass option. Quarterback going to keep it. And he's going to be brought down for a loss. Going to lose about three, maybe four yards. Now they'll mark him down with a loss of only a yard. So a fortunate spot for Burke County. Still going to bring up third down and five for the Bears. Sean Vandifer, Franklin Stevens' first ever sophomore starting quarterback, and that's in his career, Franklin Stevens, his long career. It's the first time he's ever started a sophomore. Going to throw it right side out of the play action, but nothing doing. Big time hit from Tavion Wallace. 37 collegiate offers. And you can kind of get a glimpse why. 
So both teams not able to get anything offensively in their first possession. So now Burke County will punt it away. Punting away for Burke County going to be Blake Burden, the senior. Back deep for Wayne County. It's going to be number 15, Will Green, back there to return it. Green is going to take it at his own 45. Not, not, nothing doing. Boy, I'll tell you what, great coverage that time from Burke County. That was Rashad Carter. He's another sophomore. Man, he's a big kid for a 10th grader. Now, we got a penalty flag. Check the call. Got a motion penalty against Burke County. I think Wayne County is going to decline that one. Or maybe not. Burke County went back out there as if they were going to have to kick it again. Now they'll come over to, I thought Wayne County had signaled that they had declined that penalty. Indeed, they did. So Burke County now. A little bit of miscommunication, but punter comes off the field and Wayne County ready to go. They've got it at their own 45. Going to throw it again. I think, is it intercepted? No, incomplete, they'll call it. No, it is. An interception. It's an interception by Burke County. I thought they had signaled initially that it was an incomplete. Our view was obstructed as the play happened right in front of the Burke County bench. But it's going to be a Burke County interception. We were telling you earlier that the Wayne County coaching staff and radio crew were telling me that they've been having a little bit of trouble throwing the football so far. Jeb Craven, just a sophomore, unable to be accurate with the ball this year. And that was another errant pass. We mentioned earlier in the first possession that Wayne County had. They were fortunate not to have a turnover. Not so fortunate there on that one, though. Burke County does come up with the interception. Hand off, trying to stretch it out. Far side, got some running room over there. Going to take it close to a first down is number one, Amir Williams. He's right at the sticks, and he's going to have enough for the first down. Ten-yard run from Williams. And really the first big play for either team tonight. Seven minutes to go exactly in the first quarter. Seven minutes, no score. But here comes Burke County now. First big play of the game, a 10-yard run from Amir Williams. Here's Burke County now up to the line. New set of downs. They've got it on the Wayne County side of the 50. And we've got yet another penalty flag. Going to be a false start, I believe. Going to go against the Bears. Gonna make it first and 15 now for Burke County after the penalty. So sloppy from both teams already with the penalties, hurting both of these teams. But no score, under seven minutes, 6:57 to go. First quarter, no score. Burke County's got it. First and 15. Quarterback stumbles coming out of the play, and he's gonna be sacked. That's a huge loss. Matthew Fuller. Getting it done on offense, getting it done on defense. We told you earlier that we'd be calling his name a lot tonight, and we have so far. He's committed to South Carolina. And again, you got to get a glimpse there. Quarterback that time, Sean Vandiver, the sophomore, stumbled coming out of the snap. Never was able to get his feet up under him. He stumbled, and that allowed Fuller to catch up to him. Huge loss that time. Now it's going to be second in Savannah. I mean, they've got a long way to go. Another, let's see what we got. Timeout. Timeout going to be taken. That's going to give us a chance to tell you about our friends again at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. I'm going to tell you, part service in the southern part of the state got walked by a hurricane about a month ago. I know yours truly did. I know a lot of you probably watching did as well. No matter what your case is, no matter what your situation is, 
you can always make sure you are protected, whether it's the weather, an auto accident, whatever the case may be. Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance has got you covered, and they've got an agent near you. Go to gfbinsurance.com. All you got to do is uh, find the agent in a town near you. About 150 plus agents across the state. So you've got an agent near you to help you from Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. All right, so here we go. Second and about 30, if I'm counting right. Burke County run play, gonna give it that time to number 16. Jensen Brantley, a senior wide receiver. Short gain on the play. 543, 542. He picked up three yards on that play. It's still going to make it third down in Hilton Head. We are here above Savannah. Third and 26. Vandifer, the sophomore, crouched under center. Looks, looks, going to throw it long. Nobody's there. Burke County fans wanted to hold on the receiver. Ball overthrown, incomplete. So Burke County going to have to punt it away again. So neither team either to get, uh, able to get anything offensively so far tonight. Fourth and a mile. 5-18 to go in the opening quarter. No score. You're watching the ITG next game of the week, our live stream. Next week, we've got a great one for you over in Sharpsburg, Carrollton, and East Coweta. High punt. Fair catch called for and made at the 25. Back there by Wayne County's Will Green. And that's where the Yellow Jackets of Jabo Shaw are going to put it in play. First and 10. No score. 5 9 left to go in the opening quarter. Guys, let me know where you're watching the game from tonight. Let me know who you're pulling for. And let's have some, uh, let's chat it up tonight, guys, here on the ITG News Game of the Week. All right, so here's uh, Wayne County's third offensive possession of the night. Strong run that time to Fuller. He'll take it for about five. Second down and uh, second and five. Five-yard gain for Fuller. Strong run that time. Again, you can bet your bottom dollar he'll be getting it a lot tonight, a lot more. He's already been very significantly involved in Wayne County's offense already. Going in four receiver set on almost every play. Here's Fuller again. There he goes. Look at that. Takes it to midfield. 20-yard run that time by Fuller. Well, you saw the talent there. You saw his great body control, as all the great athletes have. He was stumbling like he was going to come down. He was able to pick up his momentum and regain his composure and able to take it for a big run. First and 10, the ball sits right at, or just shy of the 50, rather. Low snap. Throws, far side, complete, wide receiver screen. First down and more. Taking it to the Burke County, 39. Pass was complete that time for Wayne County. Eric Hodges, he's also been targeted a couple of times tonight already by Jeb Craven. So Craven looks like he's getting a little bit better touch on his passes. Jabo Shaw, of course, the former quarterback himself. You remember, of course, what he was able to do up at Raven County, throwing the football quite a bit. Here's Fuller again, taking it for about three, four. On a carry, zero, Fuller. On the stop, number 17, Carter. 
322, 3.21, 3.20 to go in the first quarter. No score, but Wayne County is showing the first real threat of either team tonight so far as they've got it down at the Burke County 36-yard line. Second and seven. Again, Yellow Jackets, four receivers set every play. Fuller, the long back off the right hip of the quarterback. He'll stumble, and that was very awkward looking. Make sure he's okay. Uh, like he stumbled, maybe twisted his ankle and able to get it back to the line of scrimmage, I think. They'll give him about a half a yard. So third down and six. Third down play here for the Yellow Jackets. Well, what a job. You want to talk about a turnaround Javo Shaw made here with the Wayne County. Jeb Craven, the quarterback. He's in the gun every time. Going to take just a little toss to Fuller. He'll have the first down and more. That's a big, strong running back. Needed five, and he got about ten. That's a safe play there. Need about five yards. Give it to your playmaker. Matthew Fuller, again, we mentioned earlier, he's going to South Carolina, already committed to the Gamecocks. New set of downs for Wayne County. Four receivers set. Going to throw it long downfield. Incomplete. Overshot his receiver, did Jeb Craven. On coverage number 16, Going to bring up second down. 144 left to go in the first quarter. No score. But Wayne County is... Had a little bit of momentum with this offensive drive, able to get the passing game going. And they've got it second down and 10 at the Burke County 25. Jeff Craven going to hand it to Fuller. He'll get a yard, and that's about it. So going to bring up a key third down play. Sissy May says, I can't get the video to low. What's the score? Nothing to nothing. No score. It's third down and nine. We're at a minute 10 to go in the first quarter. Four receivers set every play for Wayne County. Play action. Looks. Throws to the end or shooting it to the end zone. Incomplete. And in between the consistency, there's also some inconsistency from the young quarterback, and we saw it again on that play. So now if you're Javo Shaw in Wayne County, what do you do here? You're kind of in no man's land. You don't want to punt it. You almost think you got to go for it. No, they're going to try a long field goal. The hold's going to come at the 32. So we're going to see Wayne County try a 42-yard field goal. Christian Sellers is going to try it from 42. Here's the snap, the hold. The kick is up. He nailed it. Christian Sellers just nailed it with plenty of distance to go. Wow, what a leg. Christian Sellers boots it through from 42. And it's Wayne County jumping on top first. Three to nothing. 42 yard field goal comes at 53 seconds of quarter number one. Guys, I want to tell you about our friends at Baker Sports. Who want to remind you, Baker Sports and Pro Sports are proud to partner with ITG Next and sponsor tonight's football game. From athletes to fans, Baker's has got your apparel and sporting equipment needs covered. Thanks for all you enjoying Friday Night Lights with us tonight. And don't forget, call Baker's at 904-388-8126. That's 904-388-8126 for any and all of your future sports equipment needs. So we're three to nothing. 
three to nothing. So the Yellow Jackets go up three to nothing. Here's a big kick return now for Burke County, taking it up to the 40, across the 40. Number 18 for Burke County, Rondarius Gray. Had over 400 all-purpose yards last week in the win. 34-0 win over Statesboro. And so far, he's been in the action tonight. Cynthia Reddish Free says, cast the video to your TV. We are watching just fine. So here we go, first and 10. 42 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Wayne County has struck first three to nothing on a 42 yard field goal. Little inside handoff that time, not much. Attack, 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Second down and 10, Burke County. May get one more playoff. Let's see. We're down to 14, 13. Looks like they may let this clock run out and go to the other end of the stadium, and that's exactly what they're going to do. So we have come to the end of the first quarter here at the Bears Den in Burke County, where Wayne County leads it. Three to nothing. They just hit a 42-yard field goal just before the end of the quarter. And the Yellow Jackets lead it three to nothing. This big region matchup tonight, the region opener for both of these teams. Burke County came into the game 5-0 on the year. Wayne County 4-1 on the year. Last year, Wayne County won it 17 to 16 in overtime over in Jessup. That was the game, again, in case you maybe missed the news. Former Burke County longtime coach Eric Parker suffered a heart attack on the field. You guys may remember hearing that news last year. He was immediately tended to by medical personnel over there in Jessup. Thank God. They got him to the Savannah Hospital. Thankful that he was able to get to a hospital that can treat pretty much anything you got. Savannah, one of the best hospitals anywhere. And they were able to get Eric Parker on the mend, and he is fine now, but decided to hang it up. And that's when Burke County went calling for Franklin Stevens. And he is taking over this year, and he's got Burke County on a roll, 5-0. Play action, gonna throw it. Got a man open down here and he hits him. Complete. Burt County. County just hit a long pass from the 39. Complete to the 11 yard line. It's a 50-yard pass completion from the 39 of Burke to the 11 of Wayne County. 50-yard pass completion, and it's got the Bears first and 10 from the 11 just outside the 10. Going to hand it. And nothing doing. The running back, number one, slid down. That's Amir Williams who slid down. So we got Thomas County Central, Obadiah Farley. What's up, brother? Giving us the update on Thomas County Central, 14 to nothing over veterans. Patricia Lay says, hold them, Yellow Jackets. Nissan Altsma says, go Yellow Jackets. Second down, he lost a couple of yards on that play, sliding down, back to the 13. Second and 12. Little inside handoff, gonna take it to the 10. Boy, look at that Burke County, just a big scum drive and pile and this driving forward. Big rugby scum. <laughs> you gotta love that. That is football for the purest. 
So they gave an inside handoff that time to number 16, Jensen Brantley. They had him stuffed right at the line, but the Burke County offense just came together and just pushed him forward <laughs> down to the six. Third down, five needed for the first. Quarterback, oh, he fooled everybody, had me fooled. What a play. A little sleight of hand that time from the sophomore, Sean Fendifer. I swore he had given it to Amir Williams, had me fooled, had us all fooled, had the Wayne County defense fooled, and Sean Vandifer, after hitting a 50-yard bomb on a great throw, now takes it in from six yards out. Here's the extra point now attempt. It's six to three. Kick is good. Make it seven to three. Touchdown comes at 10.08 of the second quarter. What do you guys think about that? Incredible. Gina Thompson says, let's go Wayne County. You kind of figured Mr. Cameraman Sean Perry was asking me, who do you think is going to win tonight? 50-50 is what I told him. Two great teams. And I got to be honest with you, when we were looking at this game, trying to figure out what game we would do tonight, we knew this was going to be a heck of a drive for us. But I got to be honest with you, if you love high school football, which we do, and we love bringing you guys, great high school football. We knew that this was going to be one of the best games in the state tonight, and so far it is not disappointed. Seven to three, the homestanding Bears are able to answer with a touchdown, and they lead it seven to three, second quarter, 10.08 left to go. Here we go. Kickoff, it's returnable from the seven. Whoa, what a hit. Great day in the morning. What was the number of that truck? <laughs> what, what in the world? Number, <laughs> man, are you kidding me? Brandon Lively came down like a missile. And boom, he lowered the boom. So Wayne County going to put it in play. They'll have it first and 10 from their own 23. 10 minutes to go in the first half, 7 to 3. Burke County leads it. Great game so far. There goes Fuller, right side. They'll stack him up for no game. Jessica Thompson O'Banion says, y'all shout out Ty McGill, Wayne County's very own NFL player supporting the Jackets. There you go. Well done. You got it, Jessica. Second and 10. Jensen looks, looks, looks. Now he's under pressure. He's going to try to get out of there. And they're going to bring him down. Sack. Loss of a yard. Jeb Craven not able to find anybody downfield, and he had to eat it. So third down and 12 needed for the first now. Actually going to give him a loss of two yards on that play. So the first couple of plays here for Wayne County, nothing doing. 8.50 to go in the half. 8.50 with Burke County leading at 7-3. Third down, Jeb Craven. Four receivers. Man going to come in motion. Now he'll come back. It's a fumbled snap. Craven going to pick it up and try to run it, and they're going to swallow him up after getting it back to the original line of scrimmage. So he was able to pick up the three yards they lost. That simply brings it back to the original line of scrimmage. Going to make it fourth and ten, and Wayne County going to have to punt it away. Craven actually dropped it, picked it up, 
And by the time he was able to look up and try to find a receiver, there was a heavy rush coming in from Burke County. And he did the right thing by hanging on to it. But here's another punting situation now for the Yellow Jackets. Picking number 31, McElwain. McElwain's going to punt it away. Gary back there deep to return it. Gary is going to let it bounce. And again, it's going to take another Wayne County roll, and it'll be downed inside the 30. <laughs> so first and 10 for the Bears. 7.43 left. What a game we've got so far. We knew this was going to be a good one when we were looking around trying to choose where we would go tonight. I said, hey, you want to go make the long road trip to Burke County? My videographer, Sean Perry, said, are you crazy? But here we are. Seven to three. Short run that time. Look, Chris Flournoy gets the carry. Not much, maybe a yard. Beautiful stadium. Complete with elevator access up here to the tip top of the press box where we are situated. They got us in a great perch. We've been very fortunate this year to have been given great access and we thank Burke County's Athletic Department, Athletic Director, Wade Beecham for being so hospitable to us. Also, Franklin Stevens for being so hospitable to us. Thank you, guys. I mentioned to you next week, ITG Next Game of the Week. Going to give you a look at East Coweta and Carrollton. But we brought you some great quarterbacks this year, some great teams, and no different next year. It'll be our first look of the year at Julian, J.J. Lewis. Dylan Riola from Buford we featured a couple of weeks ago. Got a man wide open, and he missed him. Had the tight end, Burke County did. K, uh, Harry Newton was running wide open about midfield, and the pass from Sean Vandefer just floated up there. And again, he was fortunate for that thing not to be intercepted. Seven to three is the score here, 617 left. Now, Burke County gonna have to punt it away. You kind of keep waiting for something big, big explosion. We saw Burke County with a 50 yard pass earlier. That's been the biggest play from scrimmage for either team. But you kind of keep waiting for that big explosive special teams play, maybe a punt return, kick return, something like that. Hasn't come yet, but you kind of get that feeling that it might. Guys, again, if you've got insurance needs, be sure to reach out to our friends at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Their agents offer any and all kind of insurance that you need. Hey, even if you rent, you can get renter's insurance. Did you know that? Absolutely. Of course, homeowners can get insurance, auto life, farm insurance, whatever you need. Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance has got it at gfbinsurance.com. All right, here we go now. Wayne County back on offense. Nice run play off the right side that time from Fuller. Matthew Fuller, he's a good one. Leading the attack, number 23, Kelly. Gain of three, brings up second and seven. A lot of teams off tonight. So we appreciate all the fans from all the teams that are off tonight for watching. Second down and seven, 5.22 to go in the first half. Burke County leads it seven to three. Quick toss, far side, complete. Receivers got it. He'll make one man miss. There he goes down the far sideline for a nice run. Taking it inside the 40 yard line. Pass complete that time. Dwayne County's number 15, Will Green. He's been pretty active tonight 
in the passing game for the Yellow Jackets, and he gets it that time. Takes it for a nice gain. Fourteen yard gain that time on the pass play. It's a first down, under five minutes to go in the first half. Here come the Yellow Jackets. Fuller gonna get it off the right side. Boy, he made a great nifty. There's a fumble. There's a fumble on the play and Burke County's picking it up and they're running it back the other way. It's a touchdown. No whistles, no whistles. No whistles on the play. Number 17, Rashad Carter picked it up, took it 61 yards. For the touchdown, and it's now 13 to three. That comes at 435 of the second quarter. Burke County now gonna try to go up by 11. Well, I said earlier, you kind of had the feeling we were going to get a big play. And there's a huge play. In fact, the big plays tonight have come from Burke County. Extra point is up. The kick is good. Kick is good from Blake Burton. And that now makes it 14 to three. So again, to recap, after a 50-yard pass completion by Burke County, that set him up for a six-yard touchdown run by the quarterback, Sean Vandifer. That time, Wayne County, they were coming down the field. They headed at the 39-yard line. They threw it out to the receiver who made the catch. He fumbled it. And Burke County's Rashard Carter picked it up and ran it back 61 yards for the touchdown. No flags, no penalties. And the play was ruled live, a fumble. So it's 14 to three, Burke County on top. The home standing Bears are undefeated and they're trying to stay that way. High end over end kick, it's returnable from the five. 10, 15, 20, 21 yard line. Tackle made by number 33, Kelvin Scott. Return that time by number 83, Hattie Peel. So Wayne County now will go back on offense. It's 14 to three. Remember, Wayne County jumped out on front on a 42-yard field goal to make it three to nothing. Burke County has come back on the heels of two big plays, a 50-yard touchdown pass instead of a six-yard touchdown run, and then that was followed by a 61-yard fumble return for a touchdown. And that's where we are, 14 to three. Long throw, in and out. Actually, pretty good coverage that time from Jakari Crawford, the senior corner for Burke County. That was mano a mano. Mike Sorensen gives us an update. No surprise here. Colquitt County in a warm-up game, 21-3 over Lincoln and Tallahassee. Wayne County, second down, 10. Going to give it to Fuller. Boy, he can change the game in a hurry. Big play here, taking it close to the first down. He's going to be a couple of yards short. Going to bring up third and short. Four minutes. Four minutes to go in the first half. Four minutes. Third down and three. What do you want to bet number zero is going to get the ball? Fuller. Three receivers set this time, so 
almost surely going to be a running play if J-Bo not lining up four receivers. Burke County actually saw that and said, hey, wait a minute, something looks funny. Let's take a timeout. And that's exactly what we've got is a timeout. That'll give us a chance to tell you about our friends at Baker Sports who want to remind you that whether you are a cheerleader, a fan, you've got a football player in the family, or maybe you're just a weekend warrior, Baker Sports and Pro Sports has got you covered. Be sure to give them a call. Baker Sports can be reached at 904-388-8126 for all your sporting good needs. Again, that is Baker Sports and Pro Sports who give you the player of the game for both teams every week. I ask you guys to help me choose a player of the game. Now, we won't make that decision until around the fourth quarter. Now, who knows? We may have to take this thing all the way to the end tonight, the way this thing's going. But player of the game from each team going to receive a brand-new set of shoulder pads. Last week, it was Eric Brantley from Valdosta and Jerry and J.J. Campbell from McEacher, our players of the game. I said Fuller would get it. He did. They needed three, and they get four. So move the chains. It's a first down. Oh, now we got people blaming the refs. Can't do that. <laughs> Can't do that. Can't blame the refs. That's unheard of. 3-10 to go in the first half. Wayne County's got a new set of downs. Going to give it to Fuller. There he goes. Oh, he fumbled. He fumbled it. Wayne County is going to recover. Wow. What a break for the Yellow Jackets. Fuller got his pocket picked on that one. And an alert Yellow Jacket able to get on top of it. If not, man, you're looking at what could be a disastrous end of the first half. Right now, a lot of time left, anybody's game. Burke County with a 14-3 lead in a fast-paced game. We're down to 2.30 to go in the opening half. It has moved swiftly tonight. Long throw downfield, oh my goodness. Not even close on that one. We told you about some of the issues from Wayne County. We do have a penalty flag on the play. Let's check this. I think we may get a hold. But on who? It's going to be holding against Wayne County. Wayne County trying to air it out, but just – all the passes are off target here in the first half from the young sophomore quarterback for the Yellow Jackets, Jeb Craven. Second down, 16, 2.14 to go. Ball now back at the 25. Going to give it to, uh, let's see who gets that one. That's number one, I think, on that one. No, Fuller is uh, got it. I thought it was number one. Some of these new number styles can be hard to pick out sometime, but that was Fuller on the carry. So now Wayne County is like they want that clock to run. They're in no hurry, and I don't blame them. Third and long, Wayne County, 144, 143. And wow. just as I say that, Wayne County takes a timeout. I'm a little surprised at that. You've got 143 left. You're third and 15 right now. If you're J. Bo Shaw and the Yellow Jackets, if you don't make this, and it is third and long, if you don't make it, you've got to give it back to Burke County, who already leads it 14 to 3. You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe, hey, maybe you're like, hey, let's get together here. Let's call the play that's going to get us a first down. That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is, hey, we could have, uh, you know, let some clock run and try to just get this clock down to all zero so we can go in the locker room maybe just down 14 to three. But J. Bo Shaw is a winning coach. He was a winning player, quarterback at Flowery Branch, 
Went on to quarterback at Georgia Tech, then Georgia Southern. And, of course, went on to coach collegiately and at Raven County. And boy, they had a heck of a, uh, a passing game at Raven County, didn't they? All right, here we go, coming out of the timeout. 1.43 left to go in the half. Burke County leads it 14-3. We are at the Bears Den. Great night for football. Craven, deep drop, throws across the middle. Threw it into a crowd, incomplete. Three blue shirts were around Eric Hodges that time. Pass is going to fall incomplete. So now you've got 136 left as we just heard the bear roar over the PA. And the Bears are going to get it back now. They'll probably have a little over a minute to work with it here. Michael Wayne going to get this one away from about his own 15. Here's the snap. There's the punt. High end over end punt. Taken and fumbled. But the return man able to get back on it for Burke County, Rondarius Gray, fumbled it but was able to fall back on it. So now you've got Burke County. They've got the ball, 127 left. Remember that last possession now. Wayne County took a timeout. They could have let some clock run. Let's see if that hurt, uh, hurt, winds up hurting them. 127 to go. You're watching the ITG Next Game of the Week, our live stream tonight coming to you from Waynesboro, Georgia. We're high up here in extreme northeast Georgia. for this Region 3-4A matchup and the opener for both teams. Quick toss, complete to Gary. Quick game, or Gary, uh, Gray, I mean, not Gary, but Gray, about three-yard game. 115, 114, 113. Burke County gonna go with some tempo and no huddle here. Second and seven. Long throw. He's got it at the 20, 19, 15 yard line. Oh my. Sean Vandefer, I told you earlier that Vandefer is the first sophomore quarterback to ever start for Franklin Stevens ever. And you're seeing why the veteran coach has so much confidence in his sophomore. A huge pickup that time. Another crossing route pass, complete to the nine. 43, 42, 41, 40 seconds to go in the half. Here's Burke County, they already lead it 14 to three and they're trying to get another one before the half. Second down and three. Snap, quarterback throws the fade. Gonna, should get a hold here. No call, Burke County fans not happy with that and you maybe can't blame them. Wow, that little bit of sure, uh, jersey tug. <laughs> a shirt was tugged on <laughs> by the defensive back by, on that one, but the referee says, I didn't see it. <laughs> Gotta love it. That's right. Mr. Producer, or, yeah, Mr. Producer over here is like, what? What call? Second, all right, 22 seconds left. Third down and three. This is obviously a big play. And what do we got? Jabo Shaw on the far side calls a timeout, and he motions for his defense, all of them, to come over and discuss what's going on. So here's the situation. It's third down and three. We got 22 seconds left. Burke County with a big pass play that time from Sean Vandefer to Rondarius Gray. Has got him in business. He followed that up with a short crossing route completion that's got him right about the 10 yard line. In fact, the ball right at the 10. We've got a timeout. That's gonna be the last for Wayne County. 
Burke County does have one timeout left. 14 to three, Burke County leads it, 22 seconds left. And this is a huge play, and I don't have to tell you guys that. It's kind of obvious as the bear roar comes over the PA there. All right, third down and three, 22 seconds left. Jumbo formation now for Burke County. Handoff, first down and more, taking it into the end zone. Touchdown, Burke. Amir Williams, the junior linebacker and running back, takes it in from 10 yards out. It comes with 17 seconds left to go in the first half. And right now, Burke County going to go for the extra point out of the swinging gate. And they're going to be brought down short. So let's watch that call and see if that comes back to haunt the Bears. Instead of kicking the extra point, they elect to go for two. Trying to go up by 19 instead of 18. Franklin Stevens rolling the dice. But they're going to be brought down short on the two-point conversion. But it's a 20-3 game. Now, let's again, let's remember that play and see if it comes back to haunt Burke County later because what you got now is a 17-point lead instead of what could have been either an 18 or 19-point lead. We'll see if it makes a difference. Right now, though, all Burke County at this point, 20 to 3. Remember, Wayne County led this thing back with a field goal at the end of the first quarter. They hit a 42-yard field goal with 53 seconds left in the first quarter. This second quarter, though, has seen Burke County respond with three consecutive touchdowns to lead it 20 to three. So here's Burke County now going to kick it off. It's gonna go in and out of the end zone. Big time kick that time from Blake Burton. He can boot it. I don't know if you guys can hear that. They've got a recorded message. I don't know who it is, but they play that thing constantly where the recording of, I don't know if it's a super fan, a former coach where he says, come on, Burt County. And the fans respond with, come on, Burt County. You got to love high school football on Friday night, guys. All right, here's Wayne County. They fumbled it. It's a fumble. There's a fumble. The ball's loose. Who's got it? Burke County has recovered, and right now the wheels are coming off for Wayne County. They just fumbled it. It's another turnover, and right now you've got six seconds left. Six seconds left. Burke County, are they going to try a field goal? Are they going to try to, yeah, I think they're going to go with a field goal. Franklin Stevens says we're not going to chance it. They're going to try a 32-yard field goal. The hole is going to come at the 21. Snap, hold, kick is up. It's good. It's good. As time expires, Blake Burden who just put it through the end zone on the kickoff, comes back out, and he just nailed a 32-yard field goal as time expires. And right now, Burke County takes all the momentum and a 20-point lead into the locker room at the half. What a game so far. Welcome back, everybody. Phil Jones with you. ITG next game of the week. Hope you enjoyed uh, halftime entertainment there. And thanks so much for watching tonight where we've seen an entertaining first half. 
a first half that ended with Burke County kicking a 32-yard field goal to take the lead, or actually to increase their lead from 20 to three to 23 to three going into the locker room. That came after a late first half fumble, one of three tonight in the first half by Wayne County. Burke County leads it 23 to three as we are getting set for second half action. Guys, again, want to remind y'all that Tonight, we will be selecting with y'all's help. Certainly want to get your input tonight, guys, so be sure to stay checked in throughout the third and the fourth quarter tonight and help us select the game, or the player of the game, rather, for both teams. And our players of the game from both Burke County and Wayne County are each going to receive a brand-new set of shoulder pads from our friends at Baker Sports. Again, 23 to three, the score. Burke County trailed in this game on a 42 yard field goal from Wayne County. A 42 yard field goal with 53 seconds left in the opening quarter gave Wayne County a three to nothing lead heading into the second quarter. But in that second quarter, it would be all Burke County. Their first touchdown came on the heels, a 50-yard pass, followed up with a third down and goal, six-yard touchdown run by the sophomore quarterback, Sean Vandefer. Extra point was good. It came at 10.08 of quarter number two. And that gave Burke County their first lead of the night, seven to three. They would increase that lead to 14 to three at 4.35, so roughly six minutes later, a 61-yard fumble return for a touchdown from Rashard Carter, another sophomore. A lot of these young guys getting in on the action tonight for the Bears. He returned at 61 yards after Wayne County's wide receiver fumbled it. The extra point was good. That gave Burke County a 14-3 lead. And then... With 17 seconds left, you saw Amir Williams taken in on a 10-yard run. Burke County elected to go for two, didn't make it. So that left it at 20 to three. And then again, under 20 seconds left, Burke County kicks off to Wayne County. Wayne County fumbles it on their opening possession and then Franklin Stevens immediately sends in the field goal team where Burke County's Blake Burden booted in his second field goal of the half. This one a 32-yarder as time expired. And that's where we are as we begin the second half, 23-3. Burke County leads it. Thanks so much for watching our ITG Next Game of the Week. Let us know where you're watching from tonight, guys. Hope you're enjoying our live stream. We apologize for any technical issues. Our producer has given you some instructions on maybe how to correct if you're having issues. All right, so here we go. Burke County is going to get it after the opening kick. They've got it first and 10 of their own 20 to start the second half. And they're going to start it off with a nice run off right side from Amir Williams. Gonna bring up a second down and seven. Just underway, third quarter. We are in Waynesboro, up here north of Savannah. Glad to be bringing you ITG next game of the week. We go all over the state to give you the best high school football and another great one tonight. Two great teams from Region 3-4A. Another run, but nothing doing as Wayne County's DJ West making the tackle. He's a good one. Boy, they've got a lot, there's a lot of great talent on this field tonight. 
Alexander Smith says, I'm watching from down the road in Statesboro. Nathan Sloan says, Usmani Kroma already has 130 yards, two touchdowns so far on six carries in a 14-14 game between Lee and Hoko. And again, we have representatives, our very own Mark Dykes and some of our video guys are there tonight. Long throw, incomplete. Sean Vandifer went for the long one on third and nine. So the Yellow Jacket defense will come out and force a punting situation. That's good news if you're a Yellow Jacket fan. So we'll see Wayne County get the football. Nissan Altsma says, I hope we can come back and win. Kel Jackson Jr. is a Burke County alumni watching us tonight in Montgomery, Alabama. It's a bad snap. It's a bad snap. A bad snap is kicked out of the end zone. We got a penalty flag. And let's see what we get here. So there's a break on a bad snap on the punt. And we're going to get a safety called. So a safety has been called. And so that will make it 23 to 5. And now you're going to see Burke County have to free kick it to Wayne County. What a crazy turn of events that was. A bad snap. It could have gone either way. It looked like the Yellow Jackets were going to pounce on it for what could be a critical touchdown. Instead, the ball goes out of the end zone for a safety. The penalty was a late hit on Wayne County. I, to be honest with you, I didn't see that. But that is crazy. So, how about 23 to 5? Sounds like some of these brave scores of recent. So now you're going to see, after the safety, a free kick. So, the problem with that is, if, if you're Wayne County fan, you know, you, you're going to get the ball back. But the penalty is going to make or are going to allow Burke County, instead of having to kick it from their own 20, they should now be kicking it, I think, from their own 35. And again, they're going to free kick it. That means he's going to take it, the uh, bird is going to take it and just punt it. And there he goes from the 35. Line drive kick. Taking on the run, full head of steam, look out. Nice return that time from Wayne County's Jalen Jones. And don't look now, but you can sense a slight turn in momentum here. Wayne County gets the first score of the second half on a safety of all things. And now Wayne County on a nice kick return. They're going to have it right at uh, midfield. Ball at their own 49. I told you, we got a long way left, and you thought Wayne County's out of this game, not so fast. They're going to give it to Fuller, right side. There he goes, it's a big run. He's going to take it, I believe, for a touchdown. Matthew Fuller just took it 51 yards. And I told you, if you thought this thing was over, think again. 23 to 11 on a 51 yard touchdown run on first down. So 23 to 11, I think I would guess Wayne County gonna go for two. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I just, you gotta love it. Yellow Jackets gonna go for two. Two receivers near side, one on the far side. Let's see what they decide to do here. j from the two and a half yard line. They're going to fake the jet sweep. Quarterback rolls, looks, throws to the end zone. It's complete. The two point conversion is complete. 
and give Jeb Craven, the quarterback, the young quarterback who has struggled in the first half, give him credit. He sidestepped a would-be tackler, was able to regain his footing, and he found the receiver just ahead of the converging defensive back for the two-point conversion. Jasmine Fulmore says who made the touchdown? It was Matthew Fuller on a 51-yard run. And don't look now. But the first 10 points of the second half have come within two minutes, two minutes exactly. 10 minutes left. And all of a sudden, 23 to three is now 23 to 13. I told you, if you thought this thing was over and Wayne County was gonna go away quietly, I'm sure J. Bo Shaw gave them the, the big talk at halftime and said, boys, we got plenty of time. Let's not, let's not uh, get too scared. Let's just keep our composure. And now, though, Wayne County is going to boot it out of bounds, so that's going to be a penalty. So, Burke County going to start with good field position after the kick goes out of bounds. They'll take it at their own 35. What a run by Matthew Fuller. Big play after big play. I said earlier that you had the sense that we were going to see these, and we are. So 23-13, 10 minutes left. Run left side, nothing doing. Wayne County, you can sense the momentum shift here. Namir Williams off that left side, no gain. Second down and 10. Two sophomore quarterbacks in this game. I mentioned earlier, first time ever. Franklin Stevens has started a sophomore quarterback, and I mean that's wherever the legendary coach has been. Second and 10, 9 26, 23 to 13. Gonna roll, looks, gonna throw, incomplete. Second down, or third down now after the incomplete. Nine sixteen. that stops the clock. So boy, if the Yellow Jackets can get a stop here, look out. Third down, Sean Vandefer, the sophomore. Two receivers, far side, one on the near side, Vandefer. Going to try to run it. Now he'll throw it. It's complete. Receiver fell down. The receiver fell down. His knee hit. High school football, you're down. That's a tough break for Burke County. The receiver slipped and fell a yard shy of the sticks. But now if you're Franklin Stevens, aren't you going to go for it? So fourth and a yard. The ball sits at your own 43-yard line. They're going to go for it. They're going to go for it. Jumbo formation. They're going to run it up the middle. First down. That's a huge play. Franklin Stevens says, no, we're not going to punt it. We're going to run it, and they get the first down. Wow. Logan Vance says Wayne County quarterback is a sophomore too. You're right, they're both sophomores. So a huge gamble, and it's a first down, and now Burke County's gonna stay in that big jumbo formation, and they're just gonna run it right up the middle for a couple. And I think this is Franklin Stevens saying, hey, let's slow this thing down, and let's try to run some clock, and let's keep Wayne County's offense off the field, and you gotta appreciate the strategy if you're a Burke County fan. If you're a Wayne County fan, hey, you want the momentum to keep going. 
I mean, you've had all of it here so far in this second half. But Burke County trying to regain the momentum. They just picked up a critical first down. Williams trying to stretch it out here on the corner. Maybe a yard. It's going to be third down. And here's another big play. What a game we've got. The ITG next game of the week. And it's a good one. Bears 23, Wayne County 13, but this thing was 23 to three 10 minutes ago. 7-16, 7-15, clock ticks and ticks here in the third quarter. 7-10 to go in the third. Third down and seven. Big play for both teams. Vandifer, heavy rush, gets it away. Had a man open, but he couldn't get anything on the throw because he had a heavy rush coming right in his face, not able to get anything on the pass. It's going to fall incomplete. It was intended out there for Jensen Bradley. If Brantley catches that ball, he's got all day to run, but he didn't. So give the Wayne County defense credit. They're going to force a punting situation. Burke County going to have to punt it away. Here's the snap. Heavy rush, high punt. They're going to let it hit. And, boy, it's going to take a nice Burke County roll inside the five-yard line. And Wayne County forces Burke County to turn it over on a punting situation. And so now you've got Wayne County going to go back on offense. So give the Wayne County defense credit. They gave up a critical fourth down conversion, but they were able to stiffen up and force a Burke County punt. But now if you're Wayne County, you're looking at first and 10 at your own five yard line. Got to be careful here. 6.41 to go third quarter. A brand new game, 23 to three. I'm sorry, 23 to 13. It was 23 to three. Jim Craven going to be standing in his own end zone. Big run. That's Fuller. And, boy, that's going to get them out of the shadow of their own goal line, and it's going to give them the ball up to the 21-yard line. 16-yard run that time from Fuller. Again, we just saw him bust one for 51 yards to start the half. Quick toss, complete. Receivers got it. Was a great tackle though. Great tackle. Number 16 for Burke County, Jensen Brantley, the senior, made a great shoe string, a string tackle, easy for me to say. Made a great saving shoestring tackle that time and saved what would have been a huge gain for Wayne County. Second down. Wayne with the ball at their own 20 yard line. So no gain on that last play. 5.54 to go in the third in a fast moving game. Fuller gonna get it. <laughs> I mean, Fuller was hit, you thought he was gonna lose a yard. And what he does, he just spins off and picks up four. That may not sound like much, but it's better to have something than nothing. DeRay Gribson said, let's go Matt number zero. Here we go, a big play, and I've said that a lot, but we've had a lot of them. Scoreboard says first down, that's not right. It's third down and seven. Big play, four receivers set for Wayne County, full of the lone back. Snap, and we've got whistles. And we're gonna get a false start on the Yellow Jackets. Saeed Holmes says, let's go. Evelyn Gibbs says, let's go Jackets. A lot of fans, a lot of alumni for both teams watching tonight. Thanks, guys, for checking out our live stream. ITG next. 
third down and 12 now. Deep drop, they're setting up the screen. Almost intercepted, but it's not as complete. Screen pass, and there goes Fuller. 30, 25, 20. Nobody's going to catch him. Are you kidding me? An 80-yard screen pass on what was third and 12. Wow. Number zero, again. Wow, unbelievable. 23-19. I'm kind of surprised that Wayne County just going to try the extra point. We've got a flag on the play. Going to back up the Yellow Jackets, five yards. So now going to make this extra point a little farther. An illegal substitution was the call there. How about that? Third down and 12 on an 80-yard screen pass. Fuller. Here's the point after attempt. It's up. No good. The point, the, the point after hits the upright and bounces back. No good. But with four minutes and 20 seconds left in the third quarter, Wayne County has just cut the Bears' lead to four on an 80-yard screen pass and run after the catch for the touchdown by number zero, Matthew Fuller, the South Carolina commit. Wow, unbelievable. David Baldwin says, let's go Jackets. Jonathan Ashley says, yes, sir. Let me know where you guys are checking out the game from tonight. Chat with us. We'd love to hear from you. What do you think? Bears had a 23-3 lead. It's now 23-19. And Wayne County fans have got to be happy. Here's the return from the 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And he'll be taken down. But not before he gets it to the 35-yard line. Nice kick return that time from Rondarius Gray. David Baldwin watching from Jessup. What's up, David? All right, so here we go. Nissan Altsma says, go Jackets. Selena Laddie says, go Jackets, go. This big video board on the south end of the end zone says, make some noise, and you hear the bear roar. And here we go. Bears trying to get their momentum back. Nice run by Amir Williams. Buford 22, nothing on Collins Hill. That's at the half. Thank you, Mike Sorensen, for that. Alexander Smith Jr. gives us a score. South Effingham 21, Screven County nothing in the third with 8.50 left. Buddy Green says, I told you, don't count Wayne County out. Yeah. <laughs> Robin McBee Finley is checking us out from Alabama. Boogie Vale says, thanks for the live stream and go Jackets. You are welcome. Thank you for watching tonight. I appreciate you guys. Vandiver on the keeper that time. Going to bring up third and about five. Guys, we are ITG next, and we are all high school sports all the time. We bring you a different game every Friday night from around the state. Tonight, of course, it's Burke County and Wayne County. Third down, run right up the middle. Going to get the first down. What a gutsy call that was. Big run from Williams, and that will give Burke County a much needed first down. Danny Jane Causey says, Go Jackets from Baxley. Lee County 21, Houston County 21. We are there as well. Not with the live stream, but we'll give you highlights of that one. We were in the Lee County locker room, and we'll be providing highlights on Monday. You'll be able to see 
what Dean Fabrizio had to say to try to get his troops fired up. That's ITG next. Look at Tiff County. The Tiff County Blue Devils. Have you kept up with that story, guys? What a mess. But just as Noel Dean gives his resignation, he wins the first game, and now they are shocking. Northside Warner Robins by a touchdown tonight. So you want the guy gone, suddenly he's winning games for you. Williams right up the middle, not much. Maybe lost a yard. Jason Bryant says, I'm in Michigan with the Jackets in Michigan blood. I love it. Tara McGee Whitaker says, let's go Jackets. Mama Witt is so thankful to be able to watch and cheer from home. I love it. That is the beauty of the internet, guys. Can't make the game, live out of town, live out of state, no problem. We got you covered. Vandifer, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Vandifer, though, has come up limping. He says, hey, get away from me, I'm okay. Guys, I don't even know what to say about that play. Vandiver was about to, he was in the grasp, and I thought he, I was already getting ready to call the quarterback sack. He somehow was able to shuttle the ball off. Patricia Lay says, I'm in Tennessee. Go Jackets. I love it. That ball did not hit the ground. I know you guys, somebody said that. No, it was a complete incredible game. Incredible game. Under a minute to go in the third. Burke County, first down. They're trying to get the momentum back. Knight, look at here. Oh, man, he's still on his feet. Big run from Burke County's. I think that's Flournoy. Another sophomore. Both these teams loaded with so much young talent. They're going to be good for years. Jabo Shaw came in here and brought this Wayne County team back from the abyss. They were 0-9 two years ago. And Jabo Shaw comes in here and leads them to 10-3 a year last year in a trip to the quarterfinals. And now he's got them neck and neck here, 23-19. Burke County trying to hang on to their lead and trying to add to it and trying to get the momentum back on a short run off the left side as the third quarter has come to an end. What a game. What a quarter, guys. That was one of the most exciting 12 minutes of football I've ever seen, and I've called a lot of games. So we have come to the end of three quarters. As we get ready to start the fourth quarter, your score, Burke County, 23, Wayne County, 19. Big shout out to our sponsors who make our games possible. Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. If you're looking for insurance, why not call on our friends at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Their agents offer home, auto, life, farm insurance, renter's insurance, a lot more to find an agent near you. Go to the website that you see on your screen, gfeinsurance.com. Also, big thanks to our friends at Baker Sports. Don't forget, coming up near the end of this quarter, I'm gonna ask you guys to help me select the Baker Sports players of the game. A uh, One player from each team will receive a brand new set of shoulder pads. Compliments of our friends from Baker Sports. So big thanks to Baker Sports and Georgia Farm Bureau for their support. Last week it was Eric Brantley, our player of the game for Valdosta. J.J. Campbell, our player of the game from McEachern. Tonight, who will it be? All right, just underway now, fourth quarter. On the carry, number one, Williams. 
That's Williams on the carry. Gonna have a first down. Ball right at the 10 yard line. So that's gonna make it first and goal to go. That's as long as you can go with a goal to go. First and goal to go, Burke County. Gonna give it to Williams again. Gonna turn it up the middle. And there's that scum drive again, or that rugby scum drive, where they all just gather up and push him forward. And we've seen them do that a couple of times tonight. Scum or scrum? Second down, ball at the six. You gotta love it. What a game we've had so far. Roe Jordan says, hold him to three and we win this thing. Second goal at the six. What a game. Second down. Goal to go, the ball at the six. 11 minutes to go in the game. Who's gonna get our players to the game tonight? Hand off, Williams. He'll take it maybe to the five, depending on his forward progress. Who will be the player of the game tonight? ITG next. We'll select the Baker Sports player of the game. We'll need your help. I'd say let's wait and see because it could be anybody, any one of these great players that makes the difference. Big play here. Burke County wants a touchdown. Wayne County wants to at least hold them to a field goal. And we've got J. Bo Shaw and Wayne County saying, hey, let's take a timeout and let's think about this. Next week, the ITG next, game of the week, goes to Sharpsburg, where the Carrollton Trojans and Julian J.J. Lewis, one of the best quarterbacks in the state, comes to East Coweta to take on the East Coweta Indians. Going to be a great game. Hope you guys will join us then. Right now, we've also got a great game going on here at the Bears Den in Waynesboro with a timeout and Burke County leading it 23 to 19. But man, this second half has been all Wayne County. Elaine Stevens says, sick em jackets. Joe Williams says, come on Burke County. Neil Shaw's taking it personal. He says, let's go jackets, this thing's personal. I love it. Ashonda and Michael Thornton calling for some defense. Maine Lewis says, come on, Burke County. I love it. Let me keep hearing from you guys. Tiff County now 27 to 21 on Northside Warner Robins. A mess down in Tifton. And you don't think that town's going to suddenly turn upside down if Noel Dean, the embattled coach, can lead them to a win in the region at that. Quarterback draw. He's going to take it in for a touchdown. A quarterback draw, I don't know if it was by design or not, but Sean Vandifer. Six yard touchdown run. Has extended the Burke County lead to 29-19 with the point after. It's up. It's good. So a third quarter that had belonged almost exclusively to the visitors from Jessup, the Wayne County Yellow Jackets. We've seen the fourth quarter start off with the momentum, at least for now, shifting back to the hometown, Burke County Bears, 30 to 19. Remember, this thing was 23 to three at the half. Touchdown comes, guys, with 10-10 to go in the game. 10 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the game. What a game we've got. Road Jordan, 10 minutes, 10 seconds left on the clock. Lillian Bell says, let's go Matt and the Wayne train. Brashawn Unique Ross, let's go family jackets are my blood. Where's my leaders at? Let's see if they can find some here. A lot of time left, guys. 10 minutes is an eternity in football. 
high kick. But it's going to sell out of bounds. Tough break for the Burke County kicker. He's done a great job, but Blake Burden puts that one out of bounds, and that's going to give Wayne County the ball, first and 10 at the 25. Ten minutes, ten seconds to go in the game. Parkview up 27 to 13 on South Gwinnett tonight. Well, that Lee County game is something else. Buddy Green says, I want to see Ross run the ball even though Fuller is a beast. Yeah, I got a feeling that nobody's going to get the ball, my friend, buddy, except for number zero, just a hunch. And he gets it. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, you know, look, uh, he got, what, five yards? It looked like he was going to be tackled for about a three-yard loss. That's why he's special, guys. Matthew Fuller, number zero. He's committed to South Carolina. Patricia Lay says, come on, Jackets, hold them. Second down and five. Little toss to Fuller, look out. Man, you just hold your breath every time he gets the football. Because it looks like he's just about to bust it out for a big one. He gets a first down, and Buddy, like I said earlier, Buddy Green, you're going to see number zero almost exclusively get the rock here in the second half. <laughs> Road Jordan says, if they give anyone else the ball, I'm turning off the line. <laughs> you got to love it. I don't think you're going to be disappointed, Road, because I think number zero, it, this, is his, this is his game here to try to get the Yellow Jackets back in this thing. First down. And actually, there is another back. Quez Shaw gets it. Trying to give uh, Matthew Fuller a little bit of a breather there. Beverly Reddish says thanks because Ross is a beast too. Now, which one's that jaw Ross y'all are talking about? Second down, he got a yard on that play. Fuller still not in there. Busted play. Busted play. So, Jeb Craven, you could tell he wanted to throw what looked like a, a wide receiver screen, but nobody was there. That completely disrupted the play. And he tried to turn around and run it the other way and just nothing there. That gave the Yellow Jackets defense, I'm sorry, the Burke County defense, a chance to converge on him. We're at 7.50 to go in the game. Now you're looking at time becoming a, a decision maker here. This is an, it, you're not in must make it territory yet, but need a big play. Will they get it? Interception by Burke County. Forty, thirty-five, thirty, twenty-five. Well, I was saying they needed a big play, and one team got it, and it comes from Jensen Brantley. So Jensen Brantley with the interception. Still a lot of time left, but Burke County now will have it first and 10. And they're gonna have it at the Yellow Jacket. A penalty on Wayne County. Personal foul. Add 15 yards, that's not good. Not good. So a personal foul <clears throat> tacks on another 15, and that's going to move the ball all the way to the Wayne County 12-yard line. Yellow Jacket defense must step up. Hand off. Taking it to the five. 
Number two, Titus Wallace. Now, we thought he was going to be out tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm looking at the wrong uh, <laughs> looking at the wrong roster. That's Eric Patterson on the carry. Second down and three from the five. Again, clock is becoming a factor now. And if you're Burke County and Franklin Stevens, you just want to slow it down. 644, 643 to left to go in the game, 640 to go in the game. Here's Burke County. Williams going to get it. Williams. Touchdown, Williams. Amir Williams just took it in from five yards out. And that will give Burke County a 17-point lead with the point after attempt still to come. Here's the snap, the hold, the kick is up. The kick is good from number 14, Blake Burden, who boots it through. And the touchdown run comes at 6.30 left to go in this game, 6.30. And it's 37 to 19. Now, guys, again, if you're a Yellow Jacket fan, do not turn away. A big play can turn this thing right around. And when you've got number zero, you're one play away from a big play. Lee County 28, Houston County 28. What a game that is. Mike Sorensen, <laughs> did y'all stop at Bucky's tonight? No, man, we uh, didn't go the way of Bucky's, Mike. We had to come a different way. Not able to go up 75, had to come. I don't even know how we got here. Not, about 10 different directions, Mr. Producer got us here. Take a right here, take a left here, go to the tree, come up through, I don't know, Nate Hunter or something. Question is, how are we going back? Any suggestions from you guys? We are uh, situated, by the way, in Valdosta is where we're driving back to tonight. <laughs> Mr. Producer says that we got you. Yeah, we are a little further east and north, Mike. We're up here in Waynesboro, and we're close to Augusta. All right, here we go. Let's see if this is it for uh, Wayne County. They need to get some momentum. Fuller's going to get it. Now, you can bet they're going to key on him. Tackle made by number 44 for Burke County. He's been a playmaker. All right, guys, so give me some ideas on player of the game. I, I got to tell you, kind of hard not to go with Matthew Fuller for Wayne County, right? Cindy Valdez says, come on, Yellow Jackets, we can do this. Jessica Thompson O'Banion says, Wayne County, Matt Fuller all day. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you're right. It's kind of hard not to go with Matt Fuller for player of the game. But again, Patricia Lay also says Fuller. So Burke County, who gets the player of the game? Again, we give a, play, a player of the game for every team, for both teams. Looks like Matt Fuller is the unanimous choice with our viewers here. So who would get the Burke County player of the game, guys, as we come up third down, five minutes to go in the game, five minutes. This is a must make. You got to figure with Wayne County, you're going to be in four down territory here. There's the toss to Fuller. And he'll have the first down. Man, he is a ball player. Goodness gracious. He's one of the best I've ever seen. Now, 
All right, 444, 443, 442. So Wayne County gets the first down, but again, time is becoming their enemy. Now you're gonna have to start throwing it. Far side pass, complete. Well, you hear the crowd oohing and on. Surprised we didn't get a horse collar on that tackle, but no call. It'll stop the clock. Play goes out of bounds. First and ten. Wayne, oh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Wayne County. Here come the Yellow Jackets. Again, they got to start thinking about getting the ball down the field. Big run. First down. Boy, Wayne County just, get, I tell you, give them credit. They were down by 20 points at the half. They came roaring back to cut this lead to four. Now, Burke County is seemingly taking back over, but don't look now, but here comes Wayne County. Four minutes, under four minutes now to go in the game. Again, that's number 20, Quiz Shaw. Jason Bryant, love y'all back in Georgia. Miss y'all, man. Jacob, where are you at? Second down, nine. Going to throw it to the end zone. Nobody's there. Receiver backed off the route. So nothing doing. Maine Lewis says, come on, Burke County. Come on, Burke County. That is the rally cry here at the Bears' den. All right, here we go. Jeb Craven, the quarterback. Three minutes, 23 seconds left. Third down and nine. Going to hand it to Shaw. He's going to be stuffed. Number 52 made the tackle. That's Caden Bracely. He's the weak side linebacker. He's a good one. And he made a big time play there. Wayne County gonna take a timeout, stop the clock. So here's where we are. Three minutes, 15 seconds left. If you're Wayne County, obviously you've gotta make this first down. And you really need a touchdown. I mean, you gotta get one quick. I mean, you're down by 18 points. You get a touchdown, two-point conversion. That cuts it to 10. I mean, that's where you got to start thinking. As long as you have time, you never say die. Buddy Green says, we fought hard, y'all. I'm still happy. Look at Tiff County. Guys, if y'all are not familiar with what's going on down in Tifton, Georgia, an absolute mess. A petition circulated to fire the coach. He announced he would resign, but he was going to finish the season out. Since then, he won their first game. And now tonight, shocking, Northside Warner Robins. And, boy, if you win that one, now what are the fans going to say? Here we go, fourth down and 12. It's a big play. This is the play of the game, Wayne County. Trying to set up the screen. Complete. First down and more. I think he's going to score. What a call. Wayne County has just scored on a wide receiver screen. Ant Randolph says it ain't over yet. Are you kidding me? So Wayne County... On a fourth and 12, they just hit a 32-yard touchdown, guys. Do not go away yet. It's 35-27. And here comes the two-point conversion I just told you about. Guys, there's still three minutes and five seconds left. That's an eternity. If you thought it was over, not so fast. All right, Wayne County going to go for two. Where's number zero at? Burke County season. And Franklin Stevens says, let's take a timeout 
because I want to try to stop number zero. So you know he's going to get the ball. Guys, a big uh, shout out to our sponsors. These live streams all year long, not possible without the help and the sponsor of Baker Sports and Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Baker Sports says Friday Night Lights is here. And Friday Night Lights and ITG next play of the game brought to you by Baker Sports and Pro Sports. Together, they serve as your one-stop destination for top quality sports equipment. Whether you're a player or a fan, Baker Sports has got you covered. Remember to call Bakers at 904-388-8126 for all your sporting good needs. Glad you're enjoying this gridiron spectacle of a game and what a game it has been tonight. Also want to thank our friends at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance who offer home, auto, life. If you rent, they can take care of you as well. Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Go to their website, GFB. That's short for Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance.com. All right, here we go, guys. Coming out of the timeout, I'm going to bet you that number zero is going to get this on a tall sweep. Let's see what happens. Nope, hand it off, off the left side, and he's not going to get it. So they decided to hand it off left side, and he stopped his fuller right away. I would have got him out on the edge, guys, but that's me. We've got a penalty on Wayne County. It's going to be denied or declined, and it's going to be 37-25. So, again, guys, there's all kind of time left. Now, the only problem, Wayne County has one timeout left. So you're able to stop the clock with one timeout. If you're Wayne County, as we hear the sounds of Metallica's inner Sandman in the background. You gotta wonder now if Wayne County gonna do an onside kick. Lele Nicole says number seven for quarterback, please. All right, here we go. Let's see if we're going to get an onside kick or if Wayne County decides to boot it away. They're, still like they're, they're setting up the onside. Here we go. There's the onside kick. And we've got whistles. And I think Wayne County is going to come across the line of scrimmage. They'll have to re-kick it. And they'll have to re-kick it from five yards back. Great viewership tonight for our live stream, and we thank you guys for that. ITG next game of the week. <clears throat> There's the onside kick. Who's got it? Who's got it? Wayne County says they recovered, but let's wait and see. Wayne County has recovered the onside kick. It's not over yet. Wayne County has recovered the onside kick. Are you kidding me? Still three minutes and four seconds left, guys. So now Wayne County's offense will go back on the field. They got three minutes. And Jib Craven, the quarterback. Lele Nicole, you got three minutes left. She said, how much time we got? Three minutes, four seconds left. So here's Wayne County that just recovered the onside kick. That's what they had to do. And they've got it, just shy of the 50. Craven, play action. Gonna throw it across the middle. Overshot his receiver, incomplete. That'll stop the clock, 2.58. That's the good news. Bad news is Wayne County down by 12, but still. You get a touchdown here, guys. Another onside kick. Who knows? But 
the big thing is there that I was saying, you got to score. You got to get this thing in the end zone. So, got to see Craven. Mike Sorensen, thank you, brother. Appreciate that. And I do want to remind all of you, if you love the uh, what you're seeing tonight, Craven, quick toss. If you like what you're seeing tonight, you can watch. I do a show on Mondays at 5 o'clock right here. And we talk high school football. I'll talk about this game tonight. We'll talk about games all over the state. We also do a top 25 ranking, yours truly. I make a lot of enemies with that, but that's okay. I make a few friends as well. My friends at Coffee don't like that I don't have them ranked higher, but the way it is. Fuller going to be stuffed on a little toss to him. So it's going to bring up another fourth down. Now, the last time they were in this situation, Wayne County hit a wide receiver screen for a 32-yard touchdown. Can they do it again? They need some kind of fourth down magic here. 223, 222 left to go in the game. Fourth down and 11. They must make this. And Burke County says, let's take a timeout. So let's talk about player of the game. We decided, I think, unanimously that Matt Fuller gets it for Wayne County. As far as who gets it for Burke County, a lot of choices. What do you guys think? Give me some feedback. Who's going to get it for Burke County? The quarterback for Burke. That's kind of what I'm thinking, Sean Vandefer, because he really has been the difference in this game. Any other choices for Burke? What do you guys think? Santiago Vic Rodriguez says also Burke County quarterback. So there it is. So with some help from you guys, I'm going to announce that our players of the game, Baker Sports Player of the Game, are going to be Matt Fuller for Wayne County and for Burke County, the sophomore quarterback, Sean Vandefer. Thank you guys for your input. Here we go, fourth down and 11 coming out of the timeout. Can Wayne County do it? Going to throw it. Complete! Are you kidding me? When they had to have it, Wayne County does it again. Jeb Craven had all time, kind of time to throw, and he fired a strike. First and, 10 at the 31. and here comes Wayne County, new set of downs, two minutes to go in the game. Craven going to step up, and he'll run out of bounds very smartly. Craven just kept it, didn't have anybody to throw it to. 150 to go in the game. It's 37 to 25. You've got one minute, 57 seconds, or 50 seconds left. We had a penalty flag on that play. Sideline warning on Burke County. <clears throat> so here we go. You've got a minute, 50 to go in the game. Wayne County has got it. Man, they will not go away. Give Wayne County credit. They have fight, fought and clawed and scratched and stayed in this game. The Yellow Jackets. First or second and 10 from the 30. Got to go to the end zone here. Quick toss. Sideline. Complete. That's another way to do it. Just get it down slowly. Sideline passes. Stops the clock and get you a little closer. You're down by 12. You're two touchdowns away from coming back in this game. Guys, I have seen all kind of crazy things in my life. Let's hear you, Bear fans. Oh, 
Third down and one, Wayne County. Snap to Craven, looks, throws to the end zone. Oh, I can't believe you're not gonna get a pass interference on that one. Wow. Boy, Jabo Shaw is hot. Really surprised we didn't get a pass interference call on that one, guys. Are you kidding me? And I know I've said that a lot. Where, Buddy Green, where is the flag? Where is that flag? That was a pass interference if I've ever seen one. <laughs> so fourth down and one, and how many times have we said this? It's a must-make situation. You got to give it to Fuller. I don't even see it. Quarterback draw. First down and more. There he goes, Craven. To the two-yard line. Wow. I know you guys have not been happy with Jeb Craven, but this young man has pulled out all the stops. Gritty play from this young man. And he's just now put Wayne County a yard away from cutting this lead even shorter. 120 left to go in the game. One minute, 20 seconds left. Here's Wayne County, first and goal to go. And there's Fuller. No way you can stop him, can you? Touchdown, Wayne County. Touchdown, Wayne County. You've got a minute, nine seconds left. It's not over. What a game we have seen. Amanda Gates said intense game, and you are right about that, Amanda. 37, 31. Guys, do y'all realize that Wayne County is within a touchdown of winning this thing? The kick is good. You're now back to a five-point lead for Burke County. It's 37 to 32. There's a minute, nine seconds left. Wayne County does have a timeout left. Do you realize if Wayne County decides to onside kick it and they make it, they got a shot to win it. Now that's a big if. What a game. Tara McGee, what's that name? Whitaker says, Jeb is doing awesome. The talent he shows being a sophomore and overcoming that injury is nothing short of amazing. Yeah, he, glad you pointed that out. He suffered a, I believe it was a torn ACL in the third week last year. Had to come back from that. And young man has done a great job here tonight. He struggled early. But the gumption that he has shown. Okay, guys, here we go. I'm sure you're going to get an onside kick. Can Wayne County get this onside kick? Here we go. There's the onside kick attempt. It bounces up there. It's bouncing around on the ground. Who's got it? Burke County will recover the onside kick. Now, Wayne County has got one timeout left. Burke County has got it first and 10. Is Burke County going to do anything except just snap the ball and kneel down? That's exactly what they're going to do. Wayne County immediately calls timeout which he expected them to do. So, Burke County snapped it. They took a knee. J. Bo Shaw said timeout immediately. You still got one minute, uh, five seconds left. Wayne County, though, out of timeouts. Burke County has one, but they're not going to use it. Why would they? Patricia Lay says, proud of you, Jackets. Neil Shaw says, great game, Jackets. Guys, I got to tell you. Listen, this has been a fantastic game. We knew it would be. That's why we made this long drive up here to bring you guys this game. 
What a game it's been. ITG next. We are all high school sports all the time. Hope you guys will check us out. We've got a lot of great content for y'all at ITGnext.com. Check out our Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter. Another kneel down. And now Wayne County not going to be able to stop the clock as we're under a minute to go. 54 seconds. You've got 37 seconds on the play clock. So you got about 15 seconds different from the play clock and the game clock. 42 seconds, 41 seconds, 40 seconds. Wayne County cannot stop the clock. Burke County has to snap it one more time. Play clock at 10 seconds. Here come the Bears up to the line. They'll snap it one more time, and that should do it. And that's going to do it. With 10 seconds left, Wayne County cannot stop the clock. But what a game it has been from both of these teams. The clock runs out. Your final score, Burke County 37, Wayne County 32. What a game we all saw tonight together. What a game, ITG next game of the week. Guys, we thank y'all for checking out our live stream here tonight. Again, five o'clock on Monday. Be sure to check out my show, Extra Point with Phil Jones. We'll talk about high school football all around the state. And guys, next Friday, East Coweta and Carrollton from Carrollton, we bring you guys a game every Friday night, all season long. Again, brought to you by our friends at Georgia Farm Bureau and Baker Sports. Big thanks to those guys for their sponsorship tonight and all season long. 